do a little bit of diagnosis of how the tune is running. So, so far I've only done very, very basic changes to the tune in the interest of uh, just getting the car to idle, getting it to run smoothly, getting rid of check engine lights, uh, preventing check engine lights. Okay. So before and after, you'll see that in the after, the minimum idle speed that it drops to when it's warm is 950, and before it was 650. So this is enough uh, to basically keep the car from stalling. The car knows not to close the throttle too much uh, and let the supercharger stall it out because it's targeting a higher um, idle RPM. So I've been finding that this works really well. I got it to stall like one and maybe a hundred plus times of just putting the clutch in and letting it coast down. Um, if it keeps happening, or if it happens again, I think I'll bump this up to about a thousand RPM. Uh, it's really easy to change. Um, incidentally, this resolves over 60 check engine lights, which were coming on due to this like brown out kind of stall low voltage condition that the car was seeing. So. Yeah, this is surprisingly the number one thing to, to get the supercharger working properly, just lifting up the idle speed a bit. So here we see with uh, at negative 10 PSI all the way to negative 7 PSI, there is no alteration to the amount of tip in given when there's a sudden change in throttle position. But then as we approach zero PSI, which corresponds to a fully open throttle, um, the tip and comp enrichment compensation drops down to zero. Um, so the car is basically saying, no, I'm not gonna inject more fuel for you. We're already at, you know, atmospheric pressure in the intake manifold. Just because you've moved the throttle pedal further doesn't mean we're actually going to see, um, you know, more air enter the engine. But this is completely counter to how superchargers work and how a turbo car or a supercharged car would see, um, you know, changes in pedal position affect manifold air pressure. So that was why I zeroed out the table. So the intention is, you know, even if we happen to be at one or two PSI, we floor it, you know, this table would say, don't add extra fuel. And this one would say, do add extra fuel. Don't uh, reduce that tip in compensation. To demonstrate what the car sounds like, uh, I can show you right now we're in sixth gear, cruising along at 60 miles an hour. Uh, you can hear the whine in the, in the background. It'll get louder as I downshift through each gear. So let's go down to fifth. And then fourth. And third. There we go. All right. So it's quite noisy, uh, but I do have a plan for fixing that with some intake baffling. So another thing I'm looking at is this software, uh, which is Subaru Edit, uh, related to BRZ Edit, it's Epifan software. It's a pretty nice real-time logging through the Tactrix cable, the same cable I use for programming. The software I'm using here is uh, ECU Flash. It's open source, it's basically synonymous with ROM Raider. Um, I'm using the Tactrix cable for tuning the ECU. Um, the only thing that you'd be missing in order to use this for your like FB20, FB25 engine car is a, an ECU definition file. Um, ECU definition files are often requested and shared on the ROM Raider forums. So it's definitely worth searching for your like ECU ID um, or reaching out to a tuner who you know could actually make these edits for you. Um, if you don't have a definition file and no one's willing to provide one for you, uh, then you can go about it the way I did, which was to painstakingly map out the definition file using uh, a known definition for a similar car. So way back when, um, I, rec I found a definition file someone had shared for a 2016 Forester, um, which you would think is almost identical to a 2015 Forester, but it's not. So I had to go through, find, you know, kind of patterns in a hex editor within the ECU and be like, uh-huh, so all these characters look the same for, you know, this long. That was where the open loop fueling was defined before, and now it looks to be defined here at this address. Um, so kind of going one by one until you have a whole definition file mapped out. 
So uh, I don't actually recommend going that route. It's way more effort than it works than, than it's worth. But um, there are some some good tuners out there um, who you can reach out to. XRT is one of the big ones um, on Facebook. Um, so yeah. And at the lower right, we see the actual AFR, and that's in red. At the top in yellow, that is the calculated engine load in grams per revolution. And on the left in cyan, that is the total mass airflow rate in grams per second. So we can see at a glance how things are looking. And also at the bottom middle, that is our target AFR. Um, so between the target AFR and the actual, I hope to see if the fuel system isn't keeping up or if I need to make some tweaks to the um, injector latency or some other table like that. Um, right now, I have a pretty strong suspicion that the positive pressure in the intake manifold is lowering the effective pressure at the injectors past what the stock ECU can compensate for. Um, because for every one PSI of positive pressure in the intake manifold, that's one PSI fighting against an open fuel injector. So it's dropping that fuel pressure by one pound. Um, so right now at the bottom middle, you can see the car is targeting 14.4 to one, and it's hitting uh, about what it's targeting, except here when it drops. Um, but as I roll into the throttle some more, you'll see the target in the middle drop down to richer AFR, which is expected. And you'll see the value on the right try to keep up, but lag behind. running pretty well but I do want to make sure that the you know the exact open loop fueling that that AFR is safe so that's going to be one of the next things I focus on okay so some good news regarding AFRs I just reflashed the ECU to target at any rpm with a load that's the yellow value above 1.5 to target an AFR of 10.0, um, which is richer than I actually want it to be, um, but I wanted to see if it would even, uh, you know, get down even close to that. And the good news is, as we roll into it, the target AFR in the bottom middle does drop that low, and the actual AFR pegs the AFR sensor at its minimum value of 11.25. So we know that. It's not running out of fuel. Uh, it is able to hit that really rich AFR. So from here, we can tweak it up a little bit. Instead of shooting for 10.0, maybe shoot for 11.0 or 10.5 and see where that takes us. So before the change, we had kind of a smooth curve tapering down to a fairly rich target AFR of anywhere between 13 all the way down to 10.9 um, at peak load uh, at various RPMs. And what I've done instead is kind of extrapolate the graph to apply to really high load rates that are off the, the table's chart here. So this chart, don't know if you can see, it ends at 1.5 grams per rev. Um, even at two pounds of boost, I was seeing grams per rev values as high as 1.7 uh, grams per rev, so well off of this table. Um, so effectively, this table is saying, you know, with the NA engine tune, once you get to 1.4, 1.5 grams per rev, target this AFR, you'll hit it because the whole fueling system is tuned to account for, you know, NA pressures in the intake manifold um, and stop there. With the forced induction, what I'm trying to say is 
you are gonna see very high manifold air pressures that'll fight back against fuel pressure. You're not actually gonna hit this new target, which by the way is set all the way down to 10.6, but um, with this set to 10.6 and me flooring it, hitting you know two pounds of boost, I was seeing an actual red AFR of anywhere between like 11.2 and 11.7. And 11.7 happens to be the kind of magic number I'm trying to tune for. Um, that corresponds to a lambda of 0.8, meaning it is, um, you know, if, if 1.0 is the stoichiometric ratio of 14.7 units of air to one unit of fuel, uh, under boost for safety to resist knock, etc. I would like 11.7 units of air for one unit of fuel. All right, this is with the change. As we get on the gas, we drop down to about 11.6, 11.7. And that is exactly what I want to see for the supercharged setup. Once the boost leak is resolved, um, and I'm able to build upwards of three, four, five pounds of boost, assuming nothing blows up. Um, I expect that this table will need to be tweaked again. Um, and I think one of the things that would be interesting to do is actually change the scale. So instead of it ending at 1.5, like would the engine programming support it ending at 1.8, for example? Um, so. The tuning software suggests it would. I just made that change and I'm seeing the table stretch out. But it's unclear, um, you know, if the car would handle that gracefully. But I think that would be a nice thing to do because, uh, you know, if you're even into like a little bit of like part throttle into boost, you can easily hit 1.5. And at that point, we'd be overfueling for, um, you know, the, the same conditions at five pounds of boost, let's say.